Hey, welcome everyone to another one of our hard powered inspiring interviews. And as you know, every time I introduce you to an amazing guest, a speaker, an entrepreneur, a business leader, a change maker. And today we have an amazing lady with us. Her name is Natalie King, and she is passionate about empowering individuals to achieve their goals with confidence. The reason she's so passionate about it is because her confidence was eroded away by years of bullying. And I don't know if you have experienced that. You've been in a tough place where people were making jokes about you or really outright bullying you. In that case, you probably resonate with her story. Well, the defining moment came for Natalie when she realized that she could take control of her actions. She could take control of her thoughts and of her life. She really joined Toastmasters International and she became a speaker and she gained the title of a distinguished Toastmaster, which is kind of the highest uh, accreditation you can actually ever achieve within Toastmasters. Every Toastmaster knows that, right? So congratulations, Natalie, on that. And Natalie also, she went on to qualify as a certified life, confidence and goal setting coach, a public speaking mentor. And she's also holds a certificate with the Neuroscience Professional Development Program. She's also organized and run two virtual summits aimed at helping business owners and supporting business owners in the greatest ways. So Natalie, it's amazing to have you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Great. So one of the questions we always love to ask first is like, what are your three secrets or your three golden nuggets you want to share with us? What are three things you do right now in your business to bring your own business to a different level? again and again the three things that i love doing is learning mindset and consistency so let me explain a little bit so the learning is keep on top of your topic your area of expertise you can always learn something more and i've spent many years learning about confidence but i love learning more about confidence or ways that you can use confidence and you can do the same with whether it's graphic design or accountancy or anything, any skill that you have, you can keep learning about it. You can keep learning a different perspective, a different way of doing something. So just because you know a topic, it doesn't mean you can't learn anything more about it or expand your area. So this is what I mean by learning. And every day, I try and learn something new through reading, through watching TED Talks, whichever way that I can. And it doesn't mean hours and hours. It could be a 20-minute TED Talk. It could be a chapter in a book, workshop, whatever it is. I always try and find different ways to keep learning. And then mindset. It's about using the mind to help you instead of hindering you. So those little voices that you have in your head, that little one, you can't do it. Yes, you can. You don't deserve this. Yes, you do. These, this voice that goes on in your head. It's about finding a way to make it work for you instead of stopping you. So this is the mindset bit. It's about listening to what are you saying to yourself? What are the words that you use when you're talking, when you're thinking to yourself? Whatever it is, what are the words that you're using? And if they're not serving you, how can you shift them? And some days will just be a not such a good day. How can you shift those negative words? Other days, it might be easier and you have more fun with it. And then with the consistency, it's about being consistent, especially in your marketing. If you're building a business, you've got to do the marketing. So what are you doing consistently? So one of the things that I do is I go on social media and I post three times a week consistently. Occasionally I'll do a bit more, but I, my aim is three times a week. The consistency again is in blogs. How often do I write a blog? And I make sure that it goes out consistent, consistently or regularly. And I do the same with my videos. So it is very much being consistent in what you're doing. And it doesn't matter what you choose to do or how many times you're doing it. It's about doing it regularly and consistently. But again, as I said, it's your choice 
what you choose, how you do it. But don't just post once a week on, or once a month on social media and then wonder why nothing has happened. Just find what works for you and what you can do to help yourself and to do it consistently. So those are the three things that, that I work with. So it is learning, it's my mindset, and it's what am I doing consistently on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. Okay. I love all three of them. And I know there's each and every one of them is so powerful. So I'd like to go into a little more detail with them. Okay. Um, so the first one you said learning, um, you know, there's so many people that learn and learn and learn and they, we love learning and we keep learning and we keep learning all the time. Right. The thing is, you know, and, and one of my mantras is, um, you know, a lot of people that start, uh, that come to us and want to work with us, they say, oh my God, I invested so much time, money and energy into learning, but I never really earned it back. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you always say, stop investing in learning, start investing in earning, right? So important thing is how do we really be smart with our learning? I, I fully agree. We need to keep learning all the time. You're right. We, no matter what expert we are, even if we, even if we wouldn't know everything there is to be known on our topic, which we never do, right? Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, if we, uh, you know, again, um, if we, we, we could easily get lost in the learning, but we need to actually learn smart. So meaning that we learn in a way that we can apply something that serves us, our business, and it serves the people that we work with, namely our clients and, and partners and others in the greatest way. So how do you select what you learn? Because as I said, it's so easy to get lost in learning, but we want to learn to really, um, you know, to, to, to really apply it, to make it, you know, to apply it and, and to, to practically um, turn it into a success and into a result. So, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I love learning and I could spend a fortune learning, but what I do is I pick a, an area within what it is that I'm wanting to learn more. And especially within my business, I pick areas that I want to dig deeper into. And I read books. I listen to TED Talks because I find those you can do in snippets and you can put a lot of post-its in, in, your, in your book. But what you can then do is you can start to incorporate it or you get a deeper idea of something. Let me give you an example of what I mean by this. I don't know if you've heard the, the phrase, fake it till you make it. It's, it's a popular phrase. And I know that some people are like, yes, love it. And others are like, no, I hate it. And it's something that I use because it's something that has worked for me. But I really wanted to learn more about where it comes from, what it stands for, what's the meaning behind it. So what I've done is I've watched Amy Cuddy, her TED Talks. I've read her book, Presence, where she really talks about it. So this is what I mean by learning, is I've had something that I knew a little bit about. I understood it for myself, but now I understand it in a different way. I understand it in a way that I can explain to my clients. I can explain to others about the power of fake it till you make it. But act actually, as Amy Cuddy says, it's fake it till you become it. Yeah. So that I wouldn't is, have known that that. how I would be living it. Fake, you know, it's again, fake it and make it until you become it, right? But I wouldn't have known that if I hadn't dug deeper and really listened to what Amy Cuddy was saying in her talks and in her book. I found her book actually suited my way of learning much better. And I loved her book. But it also got me to understand body language. It got me to understand how you can use body language for confidence, for what you're doing. Right. So I've, I've taken something that's a topic that I'm passionate about, confidence. It's a topic that I help my clients with, confidence. But I've expanded on that topic. So I've taken something that helped me to dig deeper into confidence into a topic that I'm already learning about or knowing about. So it's not something that, that's irrelevant or a totally new topic. So what you're saying pretty much is, uh, you know, in terms of how you turn your learning into earning, 
um, it's pretty much you learn it and you pass it on to your clients. So you expand how your understanding and you can teach in a bigger way, in a greater way, right? You can help your clients make a bigger impact. Uh, you know, also we can use our learning, you know, as speakers, right? We can apply it in our speeches, we can share it in our programs, our, you know, in, in some other ways too, right? Um, of course, always saying where, just, you know, mentioning the source of where we learn it from, right? Um, so also you say that you're obviously an expert on confidence building and boosting, right? So what are a few, you know, one of a few confidence boosters that you could share with our community? Because I think we can never boost our confidence enough in life and in business, right? So one of the, the ways to, to help with confidence, especially when you starting out to building your confidence, when you feeling that I can't do it, or you just don't feel confident, you don't feel it in you. And this again is something that I got from my deeper learning is using your body. Use your body for to, to help you to get into that place that you want to be in. And let me give you some examples is if you're feeling down and sad or just negative or whatever emotion you're feeling, but it's not suiting you, smile. Just sit up straight, stand up straight, shoulders back and smile. Yes, you might be in a room totally on your own and nobody around you, but that's fine because what you do is when you smile, your body and your brain start to think, okay, yeah, I can do this. And you, you shift your mindset. You shift the way that you're feeling. And this is something you can do. It's really simple. You can do it before you got to hop onto a Zoom. You can do it before you got to get onto a call with a client. You can do it before you're walking into a room where you're meeting a lot of strangers or even people you know a little bit. All you just do is stand up straight, shoulders back, put a smile on your face and go into doing what it is that you do. Yeah. And that's a way to start. Hmm, I love it. And I, I know I'm, you know, I mean, everyone knows Amy Cuddy's uh, Power Position TEDx talk, right? I mean, it's quite famous in the, in the world of speakers and experts. It's really, really powerful. And even the smiling, I mean, it's these little things that shift things around, right? So thank you. Uh, that's a powerful way. Um, also, you said, you know, like you said, your number two was mindset. You said, um, you know, we, we need to use our mind to help us instead of to be in our way, right? So th that is a big question a lot of people keep asking all the time. How do we turn this inner critique into an inner cheerleader? Okay, you say, hey, you shift the words you use and things like that. But how do we turn these inner, you know, challengers into inner, you know, cheerleaders? So again, this is where the, the learning came in for me is I wanted to understand how the mind works and with the mind was how the brain works. Because, yes, I heard mindset, shift your mindset. It's like, yeah, it's easier said than done. What do you mean shift your mindset? I very much like the how to do it. Tell me what needs doing, and then how do you do it? So what I then did is another bit of learning for me was I did a neuroscience course because I wanted to understand how does the brain work and can we shift our brains or our thoughts. Can we do it? I'm sure you've heard the phrase and you've most probably said it yourself. All I've been like this all the time, so I can never change. Or this is a way I've always thought I can never change. Well, actually, that's not true. You can change. It just takes a bit of effort and conscious thought. So we have a lot of thoughts that are in our heads that are unconscious, they, they, just, they just happen. And one of the examples I can give to you is when you're driving, you get in the car and off you go, you're driving from A to B, you know the way, you're, you're, you switch off and you get to wherever you're going, your foot goes on the clutch, you change the gears, it goes on the accelerator, all this happens automatically. But when you first learn to drive, I bet you had to concentrate. You know, in here in the UK, we drive on the, 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 
the left side of the road with the steering wheel on the right side of the car. So it's left foot down on the clutch, right foot on the accelerator, gears in the left hand, and off we go. But we had to concentrate when we first started driving. You know, okay, left foot down. Okay, try not to stall the car. Okay, gear in. You know, and must probably ground them a little bit because as you do, you don't know where they slot in. But give it a couple of months, couple of years, guess what? You get in the car, ignition on, and off you go. So you I, haven't even thought about what you do. Not really understand that example, but how do we do it on our mind? <laughs> Yes. So what you do is when you start to notice the automatic pilot happening, when you start to notice that you are not thinking consciously, this is when you start to think consciously. You start to almost step back and think, okay, what was my last thought? What was I thinking? What was happening? So it's almost like going back to learning how to drive that car. It's about going, is paying attention to what's going on in there. It takes time. It takes practice. You're not always going to be aware of what's happening. But just like when you learn to drive, it starts to become automatic. Whereas you will think, hey, hang on a minute. I heard that. Uh-uh. You go away. That's not helpful to me. Let's shift that word. Let's change that phrase. Let's change it. And it is, it's about just doing it slowly. It's about being aware. When you see yourself, you could be typing an email. You could be staring into space. You could be watching TV, whatever it is. When you almost get that spaced out automatic pilot phase that you're in. So, oh, okay, hang on. Where was I? What was I thinking? What was happening? So it does take time. It does take practice, but you can do it. You can relearn how to drive that car or relearn how to think those automatic thoughts in your head. How to make them positive as well, right? How to turn actually these uh, inner, inner challengers into inner cheerleaders, right? Yes. Great, I, I love it. Learning, mindset, and consistency. Uh, powerful approaches and tools to really step up uh, in business and in life. Uh, you know, I, Natalie, of course, there's a lot of things we could be doing, okay? But I think it's really the things that we are doing day in and day out on a regular basis is, you know, drives the results we're getting, right? So, and whatever we're doing day in and day out eventually becomes a habit. So what is one of the habits that you have that really, you know, contribute to your success in the greatest way? So one of the, the, the habits that I've created for myself is to find ways that I can be doing something different. I can be stepping out of my comfort zone because A, I want to grow my confidence, but B, I also want to ex expand what it is I'm doing. So the habits that I've created is being consistent on LinkedIn, being consistent with my blogs, but also being consistent with my networking because those are the ways that I get my clients. So it's about finding what works for you and then being, again, consistent with it. For me, it's LinkedIn and networking. That's what works for me. But I did, I trialed and errored a whole lot of different ideas. But what is, then, what is then the habit? You say networking is a habit. So what is the habit? Is it going like to a new community or connecting with people in a new community every week? Or well, what is your habit around it? When you settle into, one thing I noticed is when I settled into networking, I would then let networking slide a little bit. It's, it's like, well, they know me, so I don't have to go there so regularly, or I will book in something else, or I wouldn't focus on networking as much. And I found then that what, in, what ended up happening is networking would become the third or fourth choice on my to-do list. And what I needed to do is to create a habit and say, no, every week on a Monday, I look to see how many times I want to go networking. Where do I go networking? And once I start to settle into a networking event or within a, a networking group, 
because that people start to get to know you. What I then do is I then start to find a new group to develop and, and get to know them and they can get to know me. I still stick with my regular groups, but it's just about making sure that I don't put networking at the bottom of my to-do list because there's something else more fun. So your, your habit is every Monday to look at what new network do I want to connect with? And then you connect with, uh, with that network this week. Yeah, and making sure that I book in a couple of network meetings every week. Okay. And is that mostly online or live? Online. Okay. I do online networking. Okay, good. Okay. That's what most people do these days. But, uh, you know, I mean, life is opening up again as well. So let's see how that, you know, how we can balance that out. Great. Okay. So I, you know, as we said earlier, you know, inspiration is amazing. And I think you've shared quite a few golden nuggets and suggestions with us today. Thank you for that. The question is, how does everyone that is with us today, and thank you, by the way, all of you um, for being on with us and being loyal and being inspired again and again by our really uplifting interviews. But what can everyone that is with us today do in a very practical way to turn their learning into an action so they get the results they want? So it's, it's about finding what you've learned how can you bring that into your business? How can you help your clients with it? How can you use it within your business? And it's also about finding ways that you can step out of your comfort zone. It's doing something that might feel slightly uncomfortable. So for me, it's networking, but it might be something slightly uncomfortable and you do it because that expands your knowledge, it expands who you are as a person, it helps you to develop and grow your confidence, but it also is bringing in new knowledge, new ideas that you then can use to help your clients, to help your business. Okay, but again, you know, what is the concrete action they can take? Uh, you say the step out of your comfort zone related to networking. I love like how you are saying, you started off saying, Ask yourself the question, what if I learned that I can, you know, that how can I bring it into a business to serve in a greater way, right? To also earn in a greater way, right? So why don't we bring these two together? Mm -hmm. So the question is, what have you learned today in this inspiring interview with Natalie around how can you step out of your, of your comfort zone while you go step into a new network, uh, you know, or you connect with people in a way? So why don't we give them something very concrete? And you tell me, Natalie, if that would be a good idea. But I'd say um, if you want to step out of a network, out of our comfort zone with networking, a lot of people tell me, well, when I go into a network or new network, I always connect with people that seem the easiest to approach or that are most likely like me or they seem to run a similar business like me or something like that. Why don't we stretch ourselves out of the comfort zone to, to rather, instead of connecting with someone we feel comfortable with, we connect with someone that we don't feel that comfortable with. Maybe it's someone that we, we might not even like very much at first glance, or it might be someone that is doing something entirely different or, you know, comes maybe from a place or, you know, a background that we would normally not naturally like to connect with right away, right? So I would suggest we add a little bit of a challenge there <laughs> to say, if you step out, okay, and, and, you know, if networking is a challenge in itself for you already, take that as a challenge and go the easy way. But if you are already a, a regular networker, why don't you step out of your comfort zone by saying, well, let me start connecting with someone that is not that close to me so that you really stretch your comfort zone and you stretch also or you, you, you open up to new perspectives, insights, approaches, best practices that you would normally not get access to, right? So why don't we make that the weekly challenge today, Natalie? Yes? That's a, that's a really good <laughs> challenge. And it is, it is a great one. I'm just going to add a slight caveat to that or an idea to it. It's, and this is uh, personal because being an introvert, just going to a network meeting is really uncomfortable because you're meeting new people. But it is about just stepping up and talking to 
somebody new, somebody different. Yes. And I do like the idea of speaking to somebody who you wouldn't maybe normally approach or anything. And this is once you've got used to the, the ideas of networking and you've been networking, then I think it's a great idea. Yes, mm. exactly. And that's what I'm saying. If you're just starting out and that is already a stretch for yourself, don't do it the hard way, okay? But if you already feel like it's already something easy for you, stretch yourself that extra edge, okay? And that extra notch, okay? Great. Okay, thank you, Natalie. Um, I know that a lot of people would probably love to connect with you and learn you know, being an introvert, you know, how can I, uh, you know, really make my business work for me in a, in a greater way, um, celebrating that I'm not always that outgoing and everything else, right? Where can people find you? How can they connect with you? So I am very much on LinkedIn. I do enjoy the LinkedIn platform and uh, also my website, Natalie King or uh, natalikingcoaching.com is my website. Okay, fabulous. Okay, good. Lovely. It's been wonderful to have you. Okay. And uh, thank you for coming out and making time in your busy agenda to inspire me and our amazing community of speakers, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, you know, thought leaders, change makers. Thank you for being here with us and uh, all the best on your side, Natalie, with your amazing confidence coaching approach. A lot of people need that, right? And thank you all for being here with us today. So, as we said, Get inspired. I hope you took a lot of notes on the hints and tips that you want to start applying. And again, enjoy tapping into our challenge. And as you know, we always love to know in a hard power global nation, what are you doing? How is it serving you? What's coming up? You know, we are here to cheer you on, to support you and to celebrate your successes with you as well. So as you always say at the end of things, speak up, scale up and impact the world. And we'll be back in another interview very soon. But for now, just roll up your sleeves and take on the challenge from Natalie's session today, okay? Thank you for being on with us today. Thank you, Natalie, one more time for being on with us. And again, all of you, keep going out there, speak up, scale up, impact the world in your own magical way. Keep making your own magic and we'll be back soon, okay? All the best for now. Cheers. <laughs>